Tonight, we'll be getting more information in relation to the preparations of INEC. Our man, uh, Mr. Festus Okoye, uh, who is uh, almost becoming our in-house. <laughs> I won't call him expert because he works with INEC, but you will see him frequently in this period. But he's not physically here with me. He joins us virtually from Orca. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Festus Okoye, who is the national commissioner in charge of voter education and publicity with INEC. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we have uh, a general uh, who was uh, the, the former force commander of the MNJTF and the DAFO in Sudan and the former theater commander of the Operation Safe Haven, General Anthony Atolagbe joins us live in our uh, Abuja studio. Thank you so much, General. Good evening. It's good to see you. Sir. Sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, let me begin with Mr. Okoye. Um, this effort, and I'll show you, earlier on I was asking, I went on Twitter to ask people about their experience, but it does look to me that a lot of people who tweeted back to me uh, had good things to say. Um, so I'm happy with you tonight because some Nigerians have good things to say about the process, so it's good news. We can all, all, always improve on it. Now, give us an understanding of what Nigerians need to know. These PVCs are important but the collection is still not encouraging. Do you have an idea of just how many Nigerians have collected, the rate of collection, the percentage of collection, what do we need to know now? Well, I cannot give you the rate and percentage of collection now. Um, our resident electoral commissioners, uh, some of our resident electoral commissioners send in daily reports of PVC collection uh, in their various states. Uh, some of them do send uh, um, reports every two days. Some of them send uh, weekly reports. Uh, so we are still collecting these reports uh, from various states of the Federation. And the reports vary. In some states, we have a high collection. Oh, there yeah. seems to be some uh, network issues, uh, connection with uh, Mr. Antolagbe. Um, there, re, there are some of your responses that I'm going to take tonight uh, from Twitter when I ask the question about your experience. Uh, if anyone has any worry or question to ask uh, about the process, I, w uh, I would also like to take them up tonight. Um, of course, we'll be speaking with Mr. Um, Okoye in the course of the program. But let me uh, come to the issue of security. Uh, pending the time that we'll get Mr. Okoye back online with us. General Atolagwe, um, you, the Northeast was some, sometimes your, your domain. Your, North Central. Your, the, it was the North Central. Yeah. Safe Haven was the North Central. So, uh, so you understand the intricacies uh, of the security within uh, that region and also the fact that when election comes, it's a totally different ball game. Um, when the governor said, then the 90 percent ready what do you make of that kind of statement well um good evening viewers and uh, election period usually are tough times within the polity of any nation so um when the governor comes up and says they are ready i think to some extent there is some powerful assurances he has gotten from the security uh, apparatus on the ground. And it only requires a sound security architecture that will be designed by the commander and the police commissioner, or uh, those who are responsible for uh, security within the area. So um, from what we know from the military side, Ours is to give support to the police, but uh, considering the environment or the protection environment where this election is to be held, uh, there is supposed to be a kind of graduation of the security environment. And what do I mean by that? There are areas that are, this graduation are from one to five. So when you talk about five, you are talk of, talking about an area that is predominantly military. Uh, when you come back to four, perhaps a mixture of military and some elements of 
maybe counter-terrorist policemen. And then when you come to three, it's, it will be a mix of military and then the police. And then when you come to two, it will be police uh, along with maybe NSCDC. And then you go to level one. So there will be this kind of graduation within that protection environment. And uh, it's, it's only left for who is in charge now to do a kind of an uh, assessment of the threats that are, that are existing within the general area so that you can put the design of its operation on the table in support of the other agencies. And um, normally, you, for you to be able to get the required capability to be on the ground, you do what we call uh, military capability study, which we tell you the number of vehicles, the number of men, and that is vis-a-vis -vis the level of threats that you are expecting within right. the area. So let, let me just take you up quickly. I mean, uh, Governor Zulu, mm -hmm. I, I know you must have seen him. A lot of Nigerians have experienced him when he was uh, very, uh, uh, very livid uh, on the field when there was an attack by insurgents or, um, in, Bruno, uh, in, uh, in, in the interiors of Bruno State. Now, him coming out to say, oh, things are looking good. But uh, from uh, your institutional memory, General, if you look at 2015 and 2019, and these are period where elections were cancelled, uh, at some point based on security reason, um, uh, just about this time, um, in 2015, elections, my, the NSA announced uh, the postponement of election that we're not quite ready and gave a, a six weeks uh, postponement. If you compare 2015 and 2019, uh, looking at 2023 also, would you say we have, we're fearing better than these election cycles in terms of security or the, the peace that we have had, uh, that we have in the nation? Well, I, I'm thinking um the geopolitical zones have a different level of security threats so we cannot use uh, a kind of straight jacket approach to talk about the situation uh, if you take the northeast significantly there's been some improvements and i think kudos should go to the military uh, before then we, the situation in the Northwest was not as, uh, as tough as it is now. So uh, what actually needs to be done, I think, from my own perspective, is perhaps I, I see a situation where maybe some level of technology will need to be applied, though these things are not gotten off shelf. Uh, and then a lot of, I mean, more men who are in the offices need to come out because the period is, is short. So it's not as if people are going to deploy for too long. Mm. So those areas that are not being, uh, they, are not, they won't be able to cover uh, with the level of uh, personnel that are on the ground now, when they bring out all the other uh, men of the police and that of the military and the NSCDC and others out, then you find a situation where there will be some uh, the first generation will be multiplied, mm -hmm. and then it will be able to give more cover right. into so those areas. Let me, uh, before I, I, I lose the connection with Mr. Okoye, I see that he's back with us now. Mr. Okoye, um, you, you were quite not done with what you were saying uh, before the connection cut you off. Please, could you uh, explain to Nigerians the, questions I, the question I was asking earlier? You were talking about uh, the rate of uh, PVC collection. Absolutely. And, and uh, the point I was making is that the rate of PVC collection varies from uh, one state to the other and from one place to the other. Uh, some of the resident electoral commissioners are sending daily reports to the commission. Some of them are sending reports every two days, and some are sending reports every, every one week. So we are still collecting uh, these um, uh, reports. The national commissioners are also supervising the collection of uh, uh, these PVCs in the states that they, su they supervise. Uh, but as of today, we are really, really encouraged at the turnout of uh, uh, persons coming to come and collect. Uh, community, community leaders are mobilizing 
market women are mobilizing, um, the religious leaders and traditional leaders are mobilizing, and people are turning out uh, to come and collect um, their PVCs. Yes, we have a few challenges here and there in relation to those who do not know what to do. There are some who did multiple or double registration. We are trying to explain to them on why we didn't print their PVCs. There are some people who carry that transfer and who are thinking that they can collect their PVCs at the point where they did the transfer. And we are explaining to them that their PVCs have been sent uh, to the local government and the registration areas where they want to vote. Uh, but I believe that um, by the time we spend seven days at the registration areas, that the situation will have improved uh, tremendously. So we commend the patience and understanding of most Nigerians who have turned up to collect their PVCs. Now, um, I'll show you that there are a few concerns some Nigerians are having. But let me, let me quickly get this off. Um, is there any way anyone can check the status uh, of uh, their registration on your website. Mr. Okay, can, can you hear me? All right, I think there is another frozen connection there. If you can hear me, um, if there, is there a possibility of any voter to check their status on your website? Oh dear. Uh, we'll get Mr. Okoye back as soon as we are able to to um, to confirm the connection is back. Um, General, let me come back to you. You look at the situation in the North Central. Does it give you more worry than uh, the kind of worry that we had in 2019 or 2015, which was basically or mostly the northeastern region of the country? Um, see, I, I mean, I, I was in the North Central 2017-2018. And uh, basically, what what we had done there were things perhaps that uh, the assessment of threats there before us were not done. Um, we introduced some level of uh, um, modeling. You, the, the 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 movement of troops are usually with vehicles, and we felt that look. You can't continue to use vehicles where criminals are escaping through tracks, road tracks, bush roads. Most of them, they are on bikes. They just move through those. So we introduced motorcycle uh, into the area, and we are able to catch up with people. Uh, we got some equipment to track people's phones. You go into a place, you uh, create chaos, we come after you using trackers. So to some extent, this has brought some, uh, some little respite into the North Central. Um, what needed to be done was for those coming after to keep building on what, those, is, uh, yeah, what has what, been done. But I mean, if you look at it uh, in the North Central region, we know that uh, Kaduna is, um, is a hotbed. Uh, and so specifically some local government areas in Kaduna, you look at Zamfara, look at states like Gombe, uh, part, some part of Niger, some part of Kogi, uh, which a uh, pension needs to be uh, taking on. But you cannot also take away your eyes off what is happening in the southeast region of the country. Between now and February 25th, what do you think? What kind of engagement? How do, you, uh, how do we ensure that we can improve voter confidence? Because if anyone has seen any of this violence happened, we not want to go out. But how do we improve all that? How do we make sure that things get better? OK, so if, uh, if wishes were horses, um, I've been to a lot of places and I can tell you how things will have gotten better. For instance, if we have satellites that have Earth observation capabilities, these we take can capture even car number plates. So in a station where somebody commits traffic traffic offense, it's easy. So and it's it's so uh, it's so powerful that areas can be easily captured, but these are not things that can be done overnight. We only need to just find a way to key into some of these things so that subsequently uh, things can improve. Uh, what else can be deployed? There are what they call 
VATIS, Vehicle and Cargo Inspection Systems, which are used, if you go to the border between USA and Mexico, they deploy them there. You don't need to pull anybody on the road to tell people to come down from inside trucks. You just, the, the, the bumps are there, slow down the vehicles, and then it looks, it sees how people are hiding under fruits and other things, and you tell them to come down and pick them out. We don't have some of these facilities, because these are force multipliers, in the sense that they reduce the efforts that you put using manpower. Instead of you to have 10 people standing at a checkpoint, you just deploy somebody on the machine, you have some uh, policemen that are standing in front there, immediately it signals that there are people who are uh, hiding or, order, yeah. yes. And so you, and they have uh, capabilities to also, also detect weapons, like the back scatter that are used at the airport. Those back scatters, the, so the ones that are actually deployed at the airport, usually it is because of the level of exposure that it gives to the body and the person who is observing. That is why you can't see the person who is on the machine outside. Because usually they get so attracted by some people they see, they want to peep and see who that person is. So this brought some, a lot of uh, um, measures and criticism when they first launched Backscatter, and the one we are using at the airport now. Mm. So you now see, so when you go further and start coming down, what is the level of security in the INEC offices? Are there security lights? Are there standby teams to come into the area in case the place comes under attack, even if you cannot de deploy physically there? What is the level of cooperation between the uh, security agencies? Because some even have the information, they won't release it. And when, even when they release it, they want to release it at a very, uh, I mean, they, when it's already getting late to actually react. So, but things are, are getting improved between the security agencies, right. I know. There, there are a few more uh, stuff that we will need you to help us unpack, uh, General, and also hopefully we'll get Mr. Uh, Okoye back uh, online with us. But there are a lot of issues that we need to deal with. Uh, would there be voting at the IDP camps? Uh, those that have been displaced, uh, what provision have been made for them because at this, IDP comes captured. Several states in the country have huge number of IDPs. Uh, what about incident forms? What does technology network and uh, mobile uh, connection have to do with the Beavers machine? These are some of the issues that we'll be unpacking for you. But as we go on this break, everyone, you can get on your, on your mobile phone. I was going to ask Mr. Okoye, but I mean, for the benefit of everyone, you can go type in your browser on the internet, voters.inecnigeria.org, voters.inecnigeria.org. Voters, that's V-O-T-E-R-S dot inecnigeria.org. You will be able to find your profile as a voter in Nigeria on that website. I'll be showing you more about what Nigerians are saying, your status. We told, take a break, everyone. And when we come back, so much we talk about the 2023 election, the preparation, and the security. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. This, this is what they, they, they call 21st century. <laughs> when my customer says, I want to use Google, I'll just bring out my phone, open the application, use this, press this code. I don't have, I don't have anyone that's using QS anymore. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Earlier on, I told you that you can check your status as a voter on Annex website. It's at www.voters.annexnigeria.org. And you can, by your state and your local government, you'll be able to identify where you belong. Mr. Fester Sokoye is with us. He's a national commissioner in charge of voter education and publicity. And we have uh, General Anthony Atolagbe, a former force commander of the MNJTF and the former theater operations commander at the Operation Safe Haven. Thank you so much, General, for coming tonight. Some of you, uh, when uh, you, you sent some messages on Twitter, and perhaps let me show you some of the things that uh, you have tweeted out tonight in response. Some of you have very good um, things to say about the process and some of the questions and queries that you have on your mind. Uh, this first one is coming from Adekunle. Uh, yeah, 
at uh, Classified Perez. He said, I spent about less than 10 minutes to obtain mine, smooth and seamless process. Um, another one uh, coming from um, Alpha Miracle, Alpha Miracle uh, saying, I collected mine yesterday, though the crowd was much, but I have to wait and make sure I went home with it. Then Dean Africa, uh, this is what he said in response. He says, uh, probably the easiest process I've had with anything related to Nigeria's government took me less than 20 minutes. Um, the next one is from Hassan. Hassan says, straightforward, less uh, stressful, and uh, in my world here in Mina, in Niger State, Jide Aluka on Twitter also responded by saying, attempted twice at INEC Nigeria, but neither old copy nor evaluated PVC is available. People in my LGA are not finding it easy. Mr. Okoye and, and your people at INEC, I guess you're looking at this and, uh, so that you can come to the aid. Omar Yabeji uh, at, uh, at Ogbeni uh, is saying that um, I spent less than three hours before I could collect my own. The INEC staffs are well coordinated. And Peter's Olakunle, his own response uh, seems also very similar. He says, uh, he broke it down. He said, in Surulere, line up according to your word, 12 words, write your last and first name, get called upon to collect your card, maximum 20 minutes, you are out. And Peter's, uh, Ola, uh, now Simon OJ, uh, this is what Simon OJ has to say. He says, so I went to the Karu LGA INEC office on the 13th of December. They checked and couldn't find my PVC. They filled a complaint, a complaint for omitted and missing card and asked me to come back yesterday, 5th January, as new cards could, would be printed. I showed up and my PVC was still not ready. Mr. Okoye, I hope you're noting that one too. That Ikaoba at, uh, at Isibo266 on uh, Twitter says, mine was seamless at Buari INEC office. I got in in less than 15 minutes. Mr. Okoye, these are some of the response that uh, we've gotten. I was asking you earlier how people can get their status checked. But from the response that people have checked, I mean, saying this is either encourage them to be able to go out. What more information can you give us tonight? Oh, there. Uh, we're still not able to connect back to Mr. Okoye. But let's go back to the uh, security uh, situation in the country. Now, you look at what happened in four years, 50 incidents, over 50 incidents, because by the time INEC released the report, there were, there were 50, 50 um, uh, offices attacked in 15 incidents that happened in four years. Uh, and uh, about three or more have happened. Um, uh, this is uh, really becoming uh, worrisome for, for a lot of stakeholders. Um, to protect the process, especially in the Southeast region. There is still this Monday sit at home. How do you conduct election in that kind of uh, arrangement? Well, the, the, the problem of uh, sit at home, I think, is even getting uncoordinated these days because you see some places, they are turning out to, do, to run, around, uh, run around their daily activities while in some places, others are still complying with the instructions or with the uh, directives. Um, the, 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 it's, still, it's still on some areas that have been emphasized severally here. It's about intelligence gathering. And we have various forms of uh, gathering information. Um, in, in, in this particular, uh, uh, we have what we call humans, which is human intelligence. These people are like uh, moles that are deployed just within uh, the, the society or the communities. And they are given some stipends to conduct their activities so that they will be able to pass necessary information to security agencies. How far? the various security agencies have gone in respect of this kind of deployment. Uh, we may not be able to tell if they are doing the, the right thing, it's supposed to give enough support to uh, intelligence gathering. Aside from that, there are other things that uh, perhaps could be done. Uh, if you 
look at uh, what technology does these days. Uh, we, can, we can monitor people's telef uh, telephones and hear their conversations. Uh, these are some of the areas that are available to some of uh, the security agencies that are around. Uh, we also talk about, we, do, we, we talk about drones, but uh, how many can we get at this particular point in time? Uh, because if we don't have them in stock before now, getting them before election or to deploy them during elections might be difficult. What those kind of things does is that it has a wider coverage of the area and it can, people can just sit in a place and monitor and see whether there are people moving or there is a kind of disturbance going on. And it also reduces the efforts of maybe having to throw patrols to keep going around the whole town. You have patrol just burning fuel, but when you place some of these tech equipments on the ground, all you, all you need to do is to keep a kind of a alarm system on the ground. Immediately something is coming up somewhere around Garki area. They press the bell. The standby force is already sitting inside their vehicle. To move in quickly. Yes. Let, let's, uh, let, let's look at this. The situation in the southeast region is a bit more technical. Because sometimes you said it is not coordinated. Uh, but it's very impactful in a lot of ways, in the sense, negatively, because people are so afraid, and that, in the midst of that fear, they stay at home, and they're not able to carry out their act, uh, economic activities. But if you look at it, um, uh, how, what, what do you think can necessarily be done, uh, either by the traditional uh, leadership in the, in the region, or the political leadership, or even by the citizens themselves, we have not experienced this before going into an election, yeah, but we are experiencing it this time around. Is there, is there any possibility of handling this situation, tackling it? Okay, the, as, I mean, we are all aware that uh, there are troops, there are policemen, and every other security uh, system uh, that are all deployed in the area. Coordination is important. Information gathering is also key. And then uh, there's this aspect of, um, it, we call it mutual support. What is what are we talking about? A force is spread in such a way that, you know, you should be able to get, have a linkage with the other uh, the force that are deployed to your left, to your front, to your back and to your right. So that in the event that something happens, both of you can always meet up and then you put... But, but General, you look at the attacks. They've uh, mostly come and it looks so much that they are uh, against democratic institution. What do you do in that regard? I mean, if people are attacking democratic institution, whether they don't want election or they don't want... I mean, that is a pointer, isn't it? What do you do in that scenario? You see, some of these things, they happen in not only in Nigeria, they happen across the entire uh, world space. So uh, what needs to be done, we still need to be done. If the federal government has got its security apparatus and they need to put them on the ground to make sure that how well we are combating it is the one that is important. And what do we do? There has to be regular reviews of your operations. When, for instance, if you, if you go, if you, if I deploy in a place today and you lost some men, for instance, or even let's assume you, you inflict some casualties on the, you do a kind of appraiser immediately. That's by the commander who is there. What led to this level of success that we achieved? What are we going to do to improve on it? Do we keep to these same tactics? Okay, we lost some men. What happened? Then, so you now see a station of, okay, they broke into us and ambushed us. What did we not do right that made us right. to get into Just this? Let, let's see if we can speak to Mr. Fessor Sokoye via telephone. It does look to me that uh, the internet connection has been hindering our camera. And it's very frustrating, especially on a day that I like our viewers to be able to get a sense of some of the new information that will help them get their PVC. It's just 49 days away. But the, the, the website where you can get it is up, and you'll be able to see it now, is voters.inecnigeria.org. Mr. Okoye, uh, what can you tell us about uh, the readiness of INEC? I know you're 
the beavers is uh, uh, all of the uh, all of the consignment for the beavers is ready, isn't it? Give us an understanding of what our, viewer, our viewers need to know now, based on some of the response I read earlier. Uh, well, uh, um, it's, it's very, very clear that um, there's a lot of enthusiasm on the part of the Nigerian people about this particular election. And the commission uh, is going to encourage people uh, to collect their PVCs by making the PVCs uh, available. Now, as you pointed out, we have deployed to the 8,809 registration areas uh, throughout the Federation, and national commissioners are monitoring the situation in their various states. Uh, uh, presently, I have gone to around eight of the registration areas uh, to monitor the rate of PVC uh, collection, and people are really, really uh, uh, re res responding. Uh, we have also been receiving daily reports on PVC collection uh, from Edo, from Lagos, and from other states of the Federation. And so the situation is encouraging. And um, we have reached out to traditional uh, uh, religious leaders. We've reached out to the various um, uh, community leaders. We've reached out to market women and so on and so forth. And announcements are going on. People are mobilizing uh, for PVC collection. So but there are three classes of people we have challenged with. Okay. The first, the first relates to uh, those who carry that transfer. If you are in Lagos and you... Uh, indicated that you no longer want to vote in Lagos, that you want to vote in Kaduna State and in Kaduna North local government. Your PVC for your transfer will be in Kaduna North local government and not in Lagos. That is one. Secondly, relates to those who carry that multiple, double and multiple registration. We did not print the PVCs of these classes of persons. And so their PVCs uh, the original PVCs are still valid, and they can vote with those uh, with those uh, P PVCs. And the third relates to those who have a genuine complaint. We have taken those complaints. Anyone that has a valid complaint, we are going to print their PVCs and make their PVCs av available. And so we encourage people to uh, uh, come out and mass collect their PVCs, uh, and we uh, are appreciative of the understanding and patience. Uh, most Nigerians have shown, especially in some of the places uh, that look congested. Right. So quickly, uh, because uh, uh, this telephone conversation might not be longer for television, but le let's quickly get a few things out. The IDP camps, Mr. Okoye, uh, what, uh, are there going to be elections conducted in the IDP camps? What is the organization level? Because what we understand is that the register of voters is according to polling units. IDP camps are they now uh, captured in the uh, in the process in the in the system for the voting? Well, the Electoral Act 2022 makes it mandatory uh, that the commission must factor in uh, persons who have been displaced as a result of one emergency or, or the other, uh, factor them in so that they can exercise their democratic franchise. Uh, we have profiled all the persons in IDP camps. We know the number of persons in the various IDP camps. We know the number of IDP camps in various states of the, of the Federation. And so we are going to configure uh, all the IDP camps into registration areas. And all persons who are in IDP camps who want to vote, we have an opportunity of voting. Those who lost their PVCs will be reprinted their PVCs, and they will be in a position to vote. But those IDPs who are staying in the houses of friends or who have moved from one state to the other, unfortunately may not be in a position uh, to vote. But all those in IDP camps, we have captured them, and we are configuring uh, 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 the, their pulling units into the registration areas, and they will vote in those IDP camps, definitely. Uh, so a lot of our viewers tonight want to note so many things. There are a lot of messages I have here. I'd like you to do some education, but unfortunately, uh, because of that uh, connection problem, maybe when you get back to Abuja, we'll be able to have you in the studio and speak to us uh, properly and more extensively. We'll create more time for this kind of engagement. But on a final note, there are fears of the purchase of permanent voter cards, and there are fears of people who are non-Nigerians who come overnight uh, on the eve of election, and they are used as voters, and also the fears of uh, children, underage voters in this election. What do you have to say to, to these issues? It's really causing some kind of fear in some of uh, the voters who have asked some of these questions. Uh, well, you have packed in uh, so many things into one question. On the issue of um, on, underage voters, 
uh, this commission published the entire voters register in Nigeria in uh, the various local government areas and in all the registration areas. And people have made their objections, people have made their complaints, and also people have made their claims. Uh, the commission is presently cleaning up the voters register. The voters register, the cleanup is an ongoing exercise. And we are going to try our best to make sure that we go into the 2023 uh, general election with a voters register that Nigerians can be proud of, and also with a voters register uh, that is robust. In terms of uh, uh, non-Nigerian uh, vo voting, only validly registered voters will be in a position to vote uh, during the 2023 general election. And the immigration service, uh, anytime they make any arrest, anytime they see any individual uh, who claim to be a Nigerian, who has a voter's, a, a voter's card, they make those arrests, make those voter's cards available to the commission, and we cancel those, uh, uh, those registrations. And so Nigerians should be on the lookout. If any Ni non-Nigerian approaches any of the uh, registration, uh, oh. any of the pulling units on election day, mm. they should indicate, and the security agencies will do the need. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Okoye. I know you are in the East, uh, so as soon as you get back uh, into the heart of the, uh, in, in the FCT, uh, kindly let us know. So our viewers also, you can see right here on your screen how you can get your uh, status check on the INEC uh, website. It is voters.inecnigeria.org, and you can be able to find out whether or not you will be able to. The drop-down buttons are there for you. Um, on the final note, just in 30 seconds, General, you think we are very good to go? No security issues, not, nothing major. I don't foresee any major incident, even though I can't speak for the, uh, the troublemakers. But if it happens, I, the military will be able to handle them. So, Amen, if I ask you today, if we were to conduct election in Nigeria security wise, we're good to go. Yeah, there might be some little hitches, and then may, maybe it might even lead to postponement or something, but that does not mean, it doesn't give an envelope that right. perhaps uh, the situation is that bad. You know, Anthony Atalagbe, former force commander of the MNJTF and uh, a former operations commander of the theater, uh, Safe Haven, the theater commander there uh, in the North Central region, and Mr. Okoye, thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Well, that was our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. Don't forget, on Sunday, 7 p.m., the presidential candidate of the Labour Party and his vice will be in the People's Town Hall answering questions from Nigerians on why they think Nigerians should vote for them. 7 p.m. right here on China's television. I'm sure on Kimale. Bye-bye.